hey, did you just buy a new Apple computer or you've been using an Apple computer for a while and you think it should be a little bit more efficient? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your dock so that it actually works well for you. And we are going to start it right now. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Sean Seymour. I own a photography studio in Sacramento, California, and I literally have too many computers to talk about, but one of the things that I've noticed from all of my friends that just purchased new apples is that their dock is not set up very well, and their finder, which you can find that video over here on how to do that, is not set up well either. I'm gonna show you how you can customize your dock so that it works well for you. Now, I've been trying to make this video for the last three days. We had 113 degree temperatures. A fire sprinkler across the street blew the little glass capsule that's supposed to keep the water back because it was so hot outside. Obviously, it thought that there was a fire in the building. Then we actually had winds and lightning. From what I understand, we have 373 fires in California. I drove through one to get to San Francisco. I drove back through one to get home <laughs> and literally the guardrails were still on fire. And the reason I'm not shooting this in the studio is because there's so much smoke in the air that the studio air conditioning is going to pull that smoke in and essentially it irritates me. So I'm doing all this in my office space right now. So let's jump on the computer. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I need to even touch my dock? Well, first of all, let me tell you, if you're on a laptop, you're more than likely using too much space for the dock and not enough space for your applications. On a laptop, your screen is very valuable real estate. So you wanna have everything out of the way that you're not actually using and make it more efficient for you to use. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. And as I mentioned, I'm also gonna show you a video about how to optimize Finder so that it actually can find stuff for you. And that's gonna be a video that's gonna run right over here and it's gonna be very close to the release date on this video. So the first thing you're gonna notice is likely that your dock is taking up a bunch of screen space at the bottom of your screen. So let's go ahead and jump into the settings, go to your system preferences and from your system preferences, click on dock. And what you'll see is the very first thing is size. And this is more of a personal choice, but I'll show you what my settings are so that you can see how I use it. I shrink this down to almost nothing nothing because I don't actually need to see it right now. Then I turn on magnification and I move this slider all the way to max. What that does is it allows my dock to be very small, but when I go over the top of my dock, the icon that I'm over becomes very big and readable and quite frankly, recognizable. And you can just scroll through your dock and look for the icon that you wanna open. So that's the first thing that I do, is I minimize my dock size to as small as I can tolerate, and then I use the magnification to make those icons really big. Okay, second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to minimize windows into the application icon. I click this. The reason why is because, let's say that I open Creative Cloud here, okay? And I wanna be able to use other apps without Creative Cloud having to be off here in a corner or down on the bottom or whatever. I'm a little bit more OCD than that. So all you need to do is hit this minimize button and watch how it shrinks down into the icon. Kind of a cool little effect, huh? When I click the icon, it brings me right back to where I was. I like that because I don't have to keep moving windows around and resizing windows and figure out, oh, did I put this window way over here in the corner or what? doesn't matter. I just go ahead and I minimize it, shrinks right down to the icon. Now let me give you a quick tip. Up here in the top left-hand corner, that is going to be the active application. So you can see that I have Creative Cloud running. If I wanna close Creative Cloud, some applications allow you to use this X and close, and other applications like Word do not. They continue to keep running in the background. So that is something that's kind of a pain in the butt, but what I've figured out is you can go ahead and I'll show you real quick how this works. If I were to X, you'll see that Word looks like it went away, but it's actually still running up here in the top corner. And if I use Command Tab to see what I do have running, you can see that Word is still running. All it did was close that particular window. And you don't wanna leave apps running because it uses up your computer resources. 
and you never know what that app is doing in the background. I actually had a MIDI controller, which is a controller that, you know, has a bunch of buttons on it and everything else. And I couldn't figure out why my network was so slow. Well, I opened up my apps and realized that that MIDI controller, even though it wasn't attached to my computer, was talking to their servers. And when I looked at it, I had over two gigabytes of data that went back and forth over that day. So you definitely don't want to have things running if you want to keep your computer resources available for what whatever software you're using. Now, here's a trick to close something like Word when it doesn't close using that red X. Hold down the command button and hit Q for quit. And you notice it goes away. Now it is actually closed. If I use command tab to look at what programs are open, it's closed. Okay, let's go back to your dock. Automatically hide and show the dock. We are going to check that, but I'm gonna leave that unchecked for a second just so that I can show you exactly why I check this box show indicators for open applications, and why I uncheck show recent applications in dock. So if I just, for illustration purposes, go ahead and increase my dock size so you can see it better. When I click on show indicators for open applications, you'll notice that there's a little dot that shows up at the bottom of any application that's open. This is very helpful in managing your computer resources again and knowing what apps are open. If you see a bunch of these dots underneath all of these icons, it means that those applications are actually running and that you should go through and command Q, command Q and close each one of them. So I like to know what is running. Now, when I shrink my dock down like this, I like to also know exactly where I'm gonna find that icon that I'm looking for. Let's say it's Photoshop, and I know that Photoshop and Lightroom are grouped right here together. I know that my office applications are grouped right here together. I know Final Cut's over here and so on. Well, I'm gonna increase this again just for illustration. If you notice, there's three icons right here. These are nothing more than the, than the apps that were recently open. And personally, I don't need that kind of help. I can find apps very quickly and I'm gonna show you how. So I uncheck this and what it does is it frees up a bunch of space on my dock, but it also leaves these, app, these icons in the exact same place every time. So when I size my dock down, I know exactly where I'm going for the icon I'm looking for. When that dock is changing all the time because of the most recent applications, it doesn't help me cycle and be fast. Okay, so the other thing I do is I automatically hide the dock. Now you can see that I have a full amount of screen space, but if I ever need to find an application, I just drop my mouse down to the bottom and there they are, just as if I had never touched the dock in the first place. So that is the first way that you can customize your dock to work well for you and on a laptop, help you to increase the screen space that's available for other apps. Okay, let me show you one more thing here and I'm going to go into my system preferences dock and I'm going to unhide the dock and I'm going to make it large. And this is just to show you a couple of things. Now let's say, let's add maybe calculator, and you notice by adding these, all I'm doing is dragging them from my applications folder, waiting for the icons to split and dropping it right in there. Now these are all applications that I don't use. So I don't want them in my dock. I consider the applications that are in my dock to be applications that I'm going to use all the time. And the last thing I want to do is sort through a bunch of applications that I don't use regularly. However, I'm going to show you by putting your applications folder into your dock, you can actually access all of those applications with one click without having to messy up your dock space with these extra icons. How do I get rid of these icons? Grab the icon, hold down the mouse button, drag it out until it says remove and let go. Drag and let go. This is how I would highly recommend that you customize your dock when you first get your new Apple by doing this, dragging the icons out of there and dropping them if you don't use them. I wanna put my applications folder in my dock. One of the things that I can do, and I'll show you in this video that covers how to customize Finder, is I can take this applications folder from here I can drag it right down to my dock, wait for it to open. And by the way, 
the applications folder will only go on the right hand side of your dock here after that vertical line. If you try to put it in over here with the other applications, it actually won't go in there. So put it over here, go ahead and drop it. One of the things that I like to do is I don't wanna see the first icon of the app that's in my applications folder. I'd rather see that it's an applications folder. And you can do that by right clicking on that and click on folder. And now you notice that it says applications. Okay, I promised you that by getting rid of icons in your dock, you weren't damaging anything and you weren't gonna slow yourself down on apps that you wanted to open, but did not they're not apps that you use regularly. So by having your applications folder in your dock, I can click on that and boom, there's all of my applications. Everything alphabetical, top to bottom. I don't actually need these in my dock if they're not applications that I'm using every day, every hour kind of thing. Maybe I only open messages once every week. So I don't necessarily want to clutter up my dock with that. It makes me super slow. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below. And if you want to follow along with my content, you can subscribe to my channel. Also, the bell notification will give you notifications when I have new content. And until I see you on the next one, keep it simple. I made it before the battery went dead. Ha 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 ha, you did not get me this time. Oh. That's been happening to me three days. The very first day I filmed a half an hour and literally didn't even have it recording. I guess I'm videoing, not filming, right? I don't know, leave it in the comments below. Am I filming or am I videoing? I'm just gonna run this battery dead just because I wanna be like that. I'm gonna run it dead to show it who's boss. It's gonna be so out of energy, this battery's gonna have to sleep for a week, kinda like me. <laughs> I need to sleep for a week uh, in Cancun. I'm sure it's gonna go down any minute. Oh my gosh, turn off.